What's up everybody once again it's brand man sean and this video is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because i signed myself and now i gotta talk about something that's kind of wild i don't know if y'all seen it yet but rolling stone actually came out with an article and they reported that it seems that record labels are signing two artists a day Major labels are signing two artists a day. That's a lot of artists. And I'm gonna get into some of the details on some of the thought process around that, but then really the takeaway for artists, or at least what the takeaway should be for how you approach dealing with labels in the industry. Because, you know, for artists, that is a very real thing. Everybody's not trying to do the indie route. And if anything, it's, you know, it's a good thing to know or think about. So, first of all, this reflects just the fact that labels are playing the numbers a game. They're shooting craps. Right, it was like, nah, I'm not really trying to do this quality over quantity thing. That's for the birds. That causes me to do a whole bunch of work. I'ma just look at this spreadsheet, check out these numbers, and when I look at these numbers, I'ma say, okay, how many artists do I need to break even and then possibly become successful? It's the same way that a lot of investors look at tech companies, right? It's like, nah, I don't want to have just one company or two companies. I need to have a portfolio of companies, and I just need one of these companies to make up for the rest of them, right? And that's the same with artists. And actually labels have pretty much always looked at artists that way, so I don't wanna act like that part is new, but that thing is being ramped up and put on steroids because of the streaming era. What does that mean? Why does the streaming era affect things that way? Well, essentially, we're in that era where we know content is king, right? The more content you have, the more you can feel the consumer's attention. And we're looking for market share. That's what the industry looks at, right? We want to be able to feel as much attention as possible. I want to be able to take over Spotify, have as many songs on Spotify for fans to check out and consume. And I don't want to give that up to another label because if my artists aren't dropping stuff or if my label is not dropping stuff, that means other labels have those fans attention because they're just putting out more stuff so if i just put out more stuff then i'm going to have more of your attention by nature if i just had one cool drop or like two or three big artists i don't care how successful the artist is and how talented they are at the end of the day you can only listen to but so much of them and i don't care if this artist drops this one project and it's the greatest project you've ever heard you're not going to listen to that entire project but for so long so we need to put as much stuff out into the marketplace as possible. Streaming allows that to happen because things are just different these days. Fans can just continuously, infinitely consume versus the days where you have to buy it all separately. Of course, you had the in-between, the stealing era, but that's, that's a whole nother thing. And bringing it back to what matters, right? The artist. What does this really look like? Well, we already know that means from a label standpoint, you're probably not going to be able to get the care that you need to maximize your career. Everybody's not necessarily meant to be Beyonce, but everybody has different levels of maximum. And let's just say there were 10 levels and your level was number eight, right? Your maximum level could be number eight. At the end of the day, you might stop at level three just because a label has a short intention span. If you're not working immediately, they're going to move on to another artist because they have so many options, just hoping that somebody hits and they're always gambling for the 10. They're not even gambling for the sevens and eights as much because we have so many options. We can kind of afford to really hit those tens. Uh, eights are nice, but we really want to just try to get the biggest number possible. As a matter of fact, there was a perfect example in the Rolling Stone article where a manager by the name of Ian Montone actually cited being in record label meetings, right, where a song was dropped and the next day record labels would be like, mm, nah, bro, like we got to move on from this. It's not working. And it's like, yo, this thing just dropped tomorrow. Yeah, but we looked at the numbers. It's not working. How many people do we know that did not blow up immediately? Like even the big stars, the people we really care about. How long did it take Kendrick Lamar to hit certain numbers? How long did it take J. Cole to do certain things and have certain output? The consumer's microwave mentality is resulting in businesses having that same microwave mentality in terms of how they look at artists. Could that lead to a death march of an artist bubble popping? It's something to think about, but what artists should really 
consider is if you still want to deal with some sort of label, the best route that you should probably go in is going with an indie label that has a lot less artists that's putting a lot more attention to you. As a matter of fact, you are more likely connected with their success. So that way they'll be able to nurture your career. They'll be able to help you do development. I know a lot of artists don't really believe in this whole developing myself. They think they're hot right now and they think I just need this music to blow. But the ones who are really doing it, they are all still going through development. Even if it's in real time, they're going through development. So being independent or going with the indie label overall is the way to go because these labels want market share, man. And I understand it from a business standpoint, it makes sense. And numbers are the way to do that because here's a perfect example, right? There's Apple and then there's Android. And yeah, we know that, you know, Apple's so much cooler, right? But if you look at the real market share, the actual numbers, Android, has 75% of the market share versus Apple, right? The iPhone having like 22% of the market share and there's like these other companies in between. The reason that is is because the Android operating system works on Samsung phones. It works on Motorola phones or some of these other random phones that I can't even think of right now that exist outside of just Samsung because I've been in Samsung for so long personally. But there's a lot of different phones. There we go. Google, LG phone. There's a lot of them. And because their operating system works on all those random things, they're able to have more of the market share even though iPhone just has these one set of phones that you can have access to and that one phone does have the most market share as an individual phone I believe it's still competing with all these other phones that are out in the marketplace well from a label standpoint it's the same thing right yeah you might have some dope artists right like two or three really dope artists and they have huge fan bases they might even be the biggest artist in the world however there's still all this other time for people to listen to music, right? There's still so many other type of people who won't even necessarily be fans of those huge artists, right? Everybody's not a Cardi B fan. Everybody's not a Nicki Minaj fan, Jay-Z fan, Kendrick Lamar, Taylor Swift, whoever these people are, right? So you fill that up with a whole bunch of other artists and you still got most of the market share. Once again, business at large isn't always in alignment with, you know, what's best for you as an artist. So keep that in mind, getting into those environments where the odds are a little bit more in your favor, right? There's a little bit more attention to you and then from there you can see what happens but i'll leave that at that i'll make sure i put a link in the description to the rolling stone article that i've been referencing in this video and of course once again this video is brought to you by brandman network com because I signed myself. If you like this video, go ahead and like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not subscribed, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.